I grew up in Iowa, and they had a Lions Club little program. And I had a friend that wrestled, and he convinced me to wrestle. So I started wrestling a Lions Club thing and then went to little kid tournaments. Although back then they didn't have as many tournaments as they do nowadays. It was just in the winter. And I put on my tennis shoes and wrestled uh, at about, starting about, I think, 8 or 10 years old. And uh, just went from there. Anyway, that's how I got started was through Lions Club, a little program they had. And uh, just uh, kept going from there until I got to middle school. And then they, I was in the middle school and, you know, just kept going from there. But I grew up in Iowa. My high school was Grizzled High School. That's about an hour east of Omaha. And there I was uh, my freshman year. My freshman year, I won one match. And then my sophomore year, um, I was a lot better, but I wasn't quite focused yet. And I remember asking my coach. uh, um, I remember uh, thinking about going to college and stuff, and I had no idea how to do it. I had money saved up from mowing lawns and working on the farms and stuff. And and then I saw how much it cost for college, and I realized all that money I was saving wasn't that much compared to how much it cost. So I asked my coach, you know, how how, how you get a scholarship. And back then, he just gave, gave me a short answer. He said, well, you have to be a two-time state champ. And if you're a two-time state champ, you know, you'll get a scholarship. Um, and so my sophomore year, I remember naively thinking, oh, okay, that's easy. So I'll just set that goal. So I set a goal, two-time state champ. Um, and then, you know, worked really hard towards it and stuff and then my junior year I got second at state um so I fell short but but it was a huge difference from my freshman year of winning one match and then my senior year I won state you know so that was my high school career basically I got second my junior year and I won state my senior year and I was the first state champ of my high school I was cool oh, and actually there was a team teammate uh, who was a he was a heavier weight than me so he was the second state champ <laughs> well my head the head coach was was uh Darrell Weaver and uh and then actually my senior year he had a job he had to change he had to move actually then I had a different coach named Craig Artis um they were both great coaches Fred Hildebrandt was also a coach there he was assistant coach and uh so they helped me a lot of course yeah that started when I was in high school kind of vaguely in my mind um beside you know, on top of being a state champ i wanted to be an ncaa champ but that seemed like a big dream to me so it was hard for me to believe but i made myself just keep working towards that and then i went to nebraska university of nebraska got a scholarship there and again my first two years in college they were just average um i don't think i was ever ranked or anything but i was always close i would say i was just above average on the results and then I turned the corner my junior year, and I was All-American my junior year. And then my senior year, I got to the finals and got second, got beat. Um, that year, my senior year, the only guy that beat me was the guy that beat me in the finals. And uh, he and I went back and forth during the year. So I beat him earlier in the year pretty badly. And um, he beat me by a point at the All-Star Duels. And then for the NCAA Finals, um, you know, he, that was the fourth time he had been in the finals. He won the finals his freshman year, got second his sophomore, his second his junior year. So he had had experience in the finals three other times. And I went out, and I was ready to go, but not as much as he, him. And he took the lead in about eight seconds. And that was fine. I, I was confident I could get it back. And then I hurt my ribs, um, and I couldn't move. Realistically, I could walk, but I couldn't wrestle. We kept trying. They gave me the full injury time, and I would try to move, and I couldn't. And then they would stop it, and they did that about two or three times, and my injury stuff ran out. And uh, so he won. He won that one. I remember specifically that I got I got over the hump three times. I remember I got over the hump in high school and I jumped a level. I got over the hump in college and jumped a level and I got over the hump at the international level after college, you know, and jumped that level too. And all three times what happened I remember is during the mediocre part, I remember each time I reached a point of like a fork in the road, I remember. It was like I'm tired of these kind of results wherever they were at, you know, whatever level I was I was like tired of it and I remember specifically 
basically I had to make a decision whether I was going to up my dedication or up the commitment or up the cost that I was going to pay or whether I was just going to stay mediocre or, you know, stay the same or, or maybe not even wrestle each time. And now, so actually each time came at times when I was kind of down. Each time there was a fork where one decision could have been I'm not even going to wrestle anymore because I would be down. I'd be like, geez, I'm doing all this work and it seems like um, I'm not getting what I want out of it and wrestling's a hard sport, you know, and uh, and so it was a mental decision, three different, well, all three different levels. It was just a mental decision. I made up my mind that I was going to up my commitment, the uh, the dedication, even though I was always dedicated, but there's always another level you can go. And so it was always a mental decision. And then it wouldn't happen overnight, but that's when I would start on that path. And that's how I did it myself. So it came from a bad feeling and then thinking about it, reflecting and making a decision um, to bring it up another level. And so bad went to better. <laughs> The high school coaches put a lot of time into me. I they appreciated how gung ho I was. Coaches always want like helping wrestlers that have desire and so, you know, they put a lot of time into me. They would stay I would I remember having them stay after practice a lot of times. Even though they were probably tired and didn't want to, I would almost drag them out to practice with me some more and I would I wasn't when it came to getting ready for stuff or preparing I'm kind of a shy guy but when it came to making myself better I wasn't shy about asking people for help <laughs> I didn't care I was like I need help so I'm gonna do it so they uh so those high school coaches they were receptive to that that got me a long ways and then the college coaches, the same thing. The college coaches are a little bit different. They're a little bit different than high school coaches. Usually, the the high school coaches probably mold people's character, I think, more than anybody than any other kind of coaches. Because then, when you get to college, the coaches seem to be more they developing your your skills and some mental toughness and things like that, um, which you need to do at that level. Um, but yeah, the college coaches helped me a lot in that area. And then in the international coaches, you know, it's just a whole different level of, of skill and mental toughness and strategy and all that stuff. Uh, Stan, Stan Desick, Stan Desick, he was the, the head of USA Wrestling, uh, the head coach of USA Wrestling, and he just happened to be living in Lincoln, Nebraska. So I was lucky there. He was there when I was in college. So he would come and work out with the college team and with me. And I would grab him on Saturday. I'd, I'd try to work out with him anytime I could. And so um, he's a world champion. And so I, um, I think Olympic bronze, I think. Um, you know, so he, had, he was an accomplished wrestler. And he was the biggest influence at that level. A lot of the stuff people see me show came from what he showed me. And then a lot... I'd say half of it, and the other half is a mix of what all the other coaches showed me. Well, I hope what they take from it is what I hope every everyone, every wrestler takes. And to me, the most important thing is, I mean, to me, uh, all older people know this, but younger people don't realize it, that life is hard, and there's lots of bad things in life, tough things, I don't mean bad necessarily, there's a lot of tough things that no one can avoid, and um, to me, if a person puts their heart into wrestling, and it doesn't matter what their win-loss record is, but if they put their heart into it and they get go through it, um, to me, they're learning what, it's like a little microcosm of what life is, because um, it's real tough, you win some, you lose some, you have to carry yourself, you learn self-control, um, you learn how to survive emotionally when things aren't going well and you learn how to show some integrity or character when you do win. Um, so to me, the most important thing is, is that it teaches or hopefully take from it is that they'll be able to cope and be successful in life and just, and just do in life what they learn to do in wrestling and then everything, then they'll be all right. Yeah, that was fun. Um, I went to I went to Russia. I went to France. I went to Romania. I went to Switzerland. Um, those are the main 
the main big ones. I mean, I went to Canada too. Um, I mean, like there was one other one other country, but mostly European countries. Russia and Romania were the most interesting because back then they were iron block countries. You know, many people back then didn't, weren't even allowed to go in those countries, and the whole lifestyle was so different. That the biggest thing I got from those, we all got from those experiences was it was a profound appreciation of of living in the United States because, you know, it, it was like, like almost like camping out. But, um, yeah, so those are the countries. And, and, and as far as wrestling is concerned, when I was talking about life lessons, another good important thing that I got from wrestling at the when I got to the international level was I think it was culturally and helpful to just see the world. So wrestling was a way that I was able to do that, and I probably wouldn't have done it without wrestling. Well, I remember when I was young doing it, and I remember when my kids were young doing it, and so, and the way I approached it, the way it happened when I was young, and the way I tried to help my kids approach it, which seemed to work out all right for us, was, I never, it was fun, it was, there was no pressure, so when I went in, or they went in early on, I lucked out. It was. I remember practices were fun, and so maybe they weren't technically perfect practices. Maybe some of the moves that I got shown weren't perfect, but it didn't matter. Um, what mattered was they were fun. So I would say, as a parent, to not make it too regimented, unless the kid wants it to be regimented. You kind of got to let the, the young wrestler lead the way in a certain way. You got to let them guide you. On some wrestlers want to work harder than others at that age. You can't make them be different than what they're ready for at the time. If a parent makes it not fun, then I think over a little bit of time that the wrestler won't, or the kid won't like, won't care for it. I remember I played other sports like baseball, football, and, you know, all the normal stuff. And I remember, I still remember in football, I had all these hopes of being an NFL player, you know, like every little kid, I suppose. And it was too serious for me. And, it, and the other thing is when you have a kid go in, you got to understand, not everyone's cut out for wrestling. So you go out, you let them go out and ha- do it. Hopefully in the practice, they let the kids wrestle around, like roll around, flop around. And no matter what you do perfectly, there's going to be some kids that are just not cut out. They just don't care for it. And you got to be willing to, <clears throat> you know, accept that at some point and move on. And then the ones that latch onto it, you go the pace that the, that the, that the kid kind of leads you. Um, if that if that makes sense. you got to communicate. you got to talk to you. Know, how was it? You're having fun? You know, that kind of stuff, I think. Like I said, though, there's, you, every, every kid is different. My kids, they had fun, but they were kind of serious. On their own, they were a little bit serious. You know, they, it's like they kind of wanted, they had some competitiveness, so they wanted to, to yeah. you know, pin the other guy or take him down. They just naturally, they just kind of wanted to do that. And although it might have looked hard, <clears throat> that kind of intensity, that was fun for them, the challenge, I suppose. So by fun, I don't just mean it has to be romper room. I don't mean that. What I mean is, to me, it's got to be a little bit free structure, a little bit of wrestling. That's what it is, wrestling. So let them wrestle around and, and learn balance and stuff like that. 